today's story is called the golden flower it says a tanyo myth from puerto rico remember that a myth is the genre genre just means the type of story what kind of story genre type of story and it says the type of story is the myth is a myth a myth is just like a fable. It is a fiction story, a fake story that's passed down to, from generation to generation. It typically has like animals or plants that um, talk or that have feelings. And it almost always will tell you a theme or a lesson that characters learned or why something happens just like why the fir tree keeps his, his leaves it explains what something that happens in nature so a lot of the time a myth or a fable will tell you why something happens in in nature okay so let's look at the essential question it says why do myths help us what do myths help us understand so what does a myth help us understand and while we're reading through the story i also want you to think of the theme what is the theme of the story? If you really want to challenge yourself, you can mute me. That way you can actually read the story and practice your reading. I think that that would be the best thing to do. Or you can watch the video one time with me reading it and then watch it again with it muted. So I'm going to start. The golden flower. It's one of our vocab words. A Tanyo myth from Puerto Rico by Nina Jaffe, illustrated by Enrique O. Sanchez. In the beginning of the world, there was no water anywhere on earth. There was only a tall mountain that stood alone on a wide desert plain. There were no green plants. There were no flowers. All the people lived on top of this mountain. One day, a child went walking on the dry land below the mountains. As he bent down over the ground looking for food, something floated by on the wind. He reached out and caught it in his hand. It was a seed a small brown seed. He put the seed into his pouch. The next day he went walking and again found something as it floated by on the wind. It was another seed. Day by day he gathered these seeds until his pouch was full. It could not hold any more. And the child said to himself, I will plant these seeds at the top of our mountain. He planted the seeds and waited. One morning, a tiny green leaf appeared. The child watched. From under the ground, a forest began to grow high on top of the mountain. All the people came to see. It was a forest of many colored flowers, a magic garden of green leaves and thick branches. The child was happy. In the middle of the forest, at the foot of the tallest tree, there grew a vine that wrapped itself around the tree. And from the vine, there grew a flower more beautiful than all of the rest, a bright flower with golden petals. What happened after the child planted the seeds? What happened after he planted the seeds? You can go back and it says he planted the seeds and waited and one morning a tiny green leaf appeared. So the forest started to grow. And from that flower, something new appeared in the forest. It looked like a little ball. Look, 
cried the child. Something is growing out of the flower. As the people gathered around to watch, the ball grew larger and larger until it became a great yellow globe that shone like the sun. Even as they walked on dry land far below, people could see it shining on top of the mountain. One woman said, if you put your ear next to the ball, you can hear strange noises coming from inside. The people listened. Strange sounds and murmuring could be heard, but nobody knew what was inside. Murmuring means like when people like, like a small sound, you can't exactly make out what it says. The people were afraid. After that, they all stayed away. Even the child stayed away. I wonder what noise is happening inside of this big, shiny, golden flower. One day, a man walking on the desert plain saw the golden ball. He said, if that shining ball were mine, I would have the power of the sun. I could light up the sky or make darkness fall. And he ran toward it, climbing up the rocky mountainside. On the other side of the mountain, another man saw the shining globe, and he also said, I want that thing for myself. It will give me great powers. He too began to run. Each one climbed quickly. Each one found a footpath that led to the tree. They both want the power of the shining flower. They both ran without stopping until they reached the shining globe at the same time. But what they found was not really a ball. It was the fruit of the golden flower, a calabaza, a pumpkin. The two man, men began to fight and argue. It's mine, said one. No, it's mine, said the other. Each man grabbed the pumpkin. They pushed and pulled. They pulled and tugged until, finally, the vine broke. The pumpkin began to roll down the mountain faster and faster until it crashed into a sharp rock and burst apart. Whoosh! That's onomatopoeia, a sound word. Whoosh! Waves of water poured out of the pumpkin. The water bubbled and foamed. The waves began to cover the earth, flooding the desert plain, rising higher and higher. For it was the sea that had been hidden inside the pumpkin. Out came the creatures, whales, dolphins, crabs, and sunfish. All the people ran to the top of the mountain to hide in the forest of green leaves. What do you think will happen after the people run to the top of the mountain? So they're all running away. You can see them all in the picture, running away from the water. What do you think is going to happen after they run to the top of the mountain? Let's see. Will the whole earth be covered, they cried. Higher and higher, the waters kept rising up the sides of the mountain. But when the water reached the edge of the magic forest, the little boy had planted, it stopped. This is where the forest the little boy had planted was. And it said once it reached the edge, just the end of it, the water stopped. The people peeked out from behind the leaves. And what did they see? Small streams running through the trees a beach of golden sand, and the wide open ocean sparkling all around them. 
Now the people could drink from the cool streams and splash in the rippling waves. Now they could gather fish from the flowing tides and plant their crops. Lots of adjectives, lots of, lots of describing words. The child laughed and sang as the sun shone down and breezes blew through the green leaves and rustled the many colored flowers. Water had come to earth. And that is how the Tanyo say, between the sun and the sparkling blue sea, their island home, Bora Queen, came to be. The end. These are, this is the author and the illustrator, the author that wrote the story and the illustrator. It says Nina Jaffe loved reading ancient myths and folk tales as a child and she started retelling them to her friends. She liked retelling old stories so much that she does, still does it today as an author. Nina has traveled to Puerto Rico and many other places around the world to study storytelling. And this is Enrique O. Sanchez. He's the person that drew all those beautiful pictures. He grew up in the Dominican Republic, not far from Puerto Rico. He moved to the United States and started making art. He painted signs and scenery for plays. He even made art for television shows, and now he's a painter and an illustrator of picture books. So when you're thinking about this story, I want you to think, what did the, the author teach you about nature? What is the myth? about how something started. How is this story teaching you about nature? And what's the theme?